Okay. All right, um, I will start sharing my screen and then um, you'll see the agenda and we'll start with updates like Zach said. Uh, all right, so welcome. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, I know we've been flipping off morning meetings and evening meetings. I think this is our first uh, evening meeting in a while. So it's nice to see everybody as my screen won't, okay. All right, I didn't think it was moving. So um, just our welcome review of minutes. We're not actually gonna review them, but I'll tell you where you can find them. Um, I'm gonna have everybody do their updates, um, including the youth as well. And then we're gonna talk about a piece of our action plan, like Zach said, and do um, a discussion. And then any closing remarks, we're also gonna end with, um, an evaluation that will come up on your screen. So please don't exit out until you fill out the questions. It's super important for um, our reporting for the grant and everything. So if you could just take time to uh, click the buttons on your screen before you uh, log out. So starting with um, the minutes for last meeting and the Zoom recording are all on our website. So if you go to nhscares.org slash archived dash um, minutes is where you will, will find them. They're also um, pretty easy to find from the drop down menu on our website. All right, so old business. So we'll start with um, sector representative updates. So uh, going around my screen, um, I see Janice first. So if you have any updates for us. Um, I, I really don't, um, things are moving along here and, um, we're ready to jump right back in with, you know, helping and whatever we need to do. So I think things are pretty much the same from last time. Sorry, I don't have updates. Although I did send, uh, you know, when you guys want to do some marketing for CARES, just send me what you need and we'll put it on our uh, page. So. Yeah, awesome. We um, appreciate that. And I know we have some of our interns working on our like communications plan. And we had talked about getting more subscribers to our email list. So definitely once they kind of put that together, we'll, we'll reach out. So thanks. Okay, great. That's all I have. Awesome. Um, next, I see uh, Rick is in the box below me. <laughs> Any updates, Rick? Uh, no, just good to be here and good to see everybody. Uh, Lindsay smiling and waving. <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for um, joining us. Uh, then I'm going to go over to, I see Kate on my screen. Hi, so um, I've not joined one of these calls, I think, ever. Um, not to say I can't fill the room with lots of opinions, but um, I'm going to stay quiet until uh, it seems as though it's a good time to provide some context. Um, uh, Zach asked me to come to the call, I guess, what was it, Monday? Um, I do have some questions, but I'll wait until, you know, we get to a point where that it makes sense, um, but certainly uh, appreciate being included in the conversation. Um, and then I believe Lee would probably be my next sector leader. Yes, uh, I don't have any updates for um, you guys just besides uh, programs going on and actually getting into the routine of things now, finally. Awesome. Um, I do realize now that I've sort of combined uh, sector and board, so I'm just going to keep going um, through the line there. So Dory, you're next if you have any any board thoughts. Hi, good evening. It's just really nice to see you all. Um, I know how hard you work and I uh, appreciate being here. And it's um, also really nice to see Rick. Hi, Rick. <laughs> Hi, Dory. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and then I'm trying to see. Oh, 
Pam is joining us at the moment. Um, I think I'll open it up then um, to maybe my youth updates. Lindsay, if you wanna kind of help them out, if you wanna do that. Okay, first of all, good evening, everyone. Um, my youth are a little shy for no reason, even though they've spoken, <laughs> they have spoken to many um, much scarier people, including uh, Brian Fitzpatrick and more. So, um, you know, if the three of you, all three of them are involved in peer education as well as the CADCA forum we went a few weeks ago now already, it's been, I think three weeks. So uh, if any of you are feeling brave and want to speak up about any of that, we're all yours. You can do it. Yeah, Anna, you can do it. <laughs> okay, so basically what we did was we went and through Zoom, we were able to kind of convey our opinions and what we wanna see change in our community to leaders. And it was a very fun and just enlightening process. And it really, we were able to learn also through many um, lessons about plague that's happening right now with a lot of drug use and stuff and it was a really awesome experience. Awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing about that ladies. Um, Lindsay, do you have any other today updates for your for your youth? Um, just piggybacking off of what they had to say, it's definitely been a little tough for the Today Club to be uh, virtual, you know, they're pretty sick of Zoom by the end of the day, which is reasonable. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to get back into the school hopefully soon, um, as they are physically in school. I would hope to join them. Um, we're doing our best and we're getting peer education up and running uh, as soon as possible. And I'm trying to adjust with, uh, to the school schedule the same way they are. So it's, you know, every day is a different challenge, but we're, we're going to make it. Awesome. Um, and then I think I see in the chat, um, Zach said that the phone is probably Mallory. So Mallory, do you have any updates? Yes, thank you. I was going to say something. Um, <laughs> thanks, Sarah and Zach. Um, my name is Mallory Prati. I'm with the Bucks County Drug and Alcohol Commission. Um, I, I really, the only update I would say is, um, you know, if you we, we had two events um, in the last couple of weeks. One was last night. Um, we had Dr. Aaron Weiner, um, who was at CADCA, um, present on marijuana commercialization. So we're working. Uh, I know many people who attended have been asking for the recording. So um, we'll certainly send information out about that. Um, and I would just say probably at this point, we are really gearing up for the um, medication take back collection, which is going to take place um, on April 24th. So I know we'll probably have one more meeting before then, but just, uh, I think that's it right now. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Um, anyone else that has some, some general updates um, or would like to introduce yourself? And then I'll have um, Zach and myself do NHSC uh, staff updates. So if you have something, feel free to let us know. So um, I actually, I have a, um, just a general uh, observation. So um, for those of you who don't know me, I've lived in the community since 2003. Um, I have two kids, one in sixth grade, one in uh, eighth grade. Um, and I've been very active in the community, in the sports community for quite a long time. I'm not a coach, but I'm an active parent. And um, so tomorrow night, there's a school board meeting, and they're going to vote on whether or not uh, the kids can play sports um, and actually uh, have games. So the practice is, is apparently not in question, but games are. And as we're living in this new world of COVID, um, you know, I see this, you know, and I read a lot, and I pay attention to um, statistics such as depression, anxiety, and um, just general feeling like they don't have a, a point of connectivity. I do know that the sports are keeping my, my kids moving. I don't mean that, you know, uh, figuratively, or I don't mean that literally, I mean that figuratively. They're, they're active, they can be part of something, um, and they're doing virtual, half virtual, half in school. 
Um, so I'm asking the, the collective group, um, I have, I'm sending an email tonight to the school board asking them to consider this to be an absolute no brainer. Um, you know, we're asking all these things of children to not participate or get lost or, um, uh, you know, not pick up a vape pen or, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. And yet we're preventing them from actually having a very healthy outlet such as sports to um, participate and, and literally get their, you know, their yayas out if we're gonna use a um, toddler statement. So I'm sending this email, I'm an N of one. Um, I don't know how it will be received. My hope is that um, many parents are doing this because we're trapped in our houses. Um, fields are limited at best. Obviously indoor sports for the past few months have been um, relegated to either not happening or hyper limited. Uh, so I think it's a fantastic outlet for children to, to be active, social, um, and this is, this is a very different world that they've ever had to deal with. Um, it plays, I think, very heavily in a negative sense on their mental health and um, not to mention their physical health. So I, I, I you know, I asked this of, of this team, of this group, um, how do we help influence the board to make the right decisions? Uh, there is zero evidence to indicate that playing sports outside will, you know, contract or be a possible thing for kids to contract COVID. There's also zero evidence to support that um, uh, kids are, are um, you know, even getting the, the disease. It's a, you know, 99.9% .9 curable for kids, even 100% um, or survivable. So to me, the risk far um, is far, uh, you know, the, the reward is greatly outweighs the risk and our kids need it um, from a, a baseline. So I throw this out there for, the, for this group and see just what people are generally thinking. Hey, um, if I can hop in, what I, I guess what I would ask is um, if folks are interested maybe in joining you in the, in your, you know, in your email, mm -hmm. if you maybe want to drop your, your contact information in the chat. Yeah, you got can, it. You know, they can maybe chime in directly with you um, and work, you know, work with you. I would say to some degree, because of our relationship with the school district, um, and you know, our, the fact that right now we have a relationship and we're able to get in the school district, mm -hmm. um, in past when we have done, when New Hope Silvery Cares, the coalition has done that in an organized manner, mm -hmm. we've lost that ability to, to be in the school. Um, and what it's that, kind of what been, does that, what does that mean that, that, that as there's resistance yeah, so what I would say is as individuals in this group, if, if people want to join with you, I think that's fine. But uh -huh. I don't know that I want to put the New Hope Sobre Cares name behind it just because they know where we stand, but I don't want to go to the board uh, as New Hope Sobre Cares. And mostly because we're providing exactly what you're asking for, but um, in ways that are, you know, specific to substance abuse prevention. Um, you know, I, which to me, of course, is part of that, right? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, but like, I don't want to lose the opportunity for us to do peer education or no. some of the other. Can I'm I, not, yeah, I, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to say that I support you, Zach, 100%. I hear you, Kate. I'm a substitute teacher. I'm in not only New Hope Solberry, I'm all over the county. And right. I talk to teachers every day, I talk to parents every day, I talk to kids every day. And I also do prevention education for NOVA. So I hear your pain, I understand that. You know, Council Rock is my school district. And right. the COVID cases that happened were the sports, that, that were primarily were the sports teams. I'm just saying that that happened, you know, in the fall, right? That's just one thing to think about. It was volleyball, it was basketball, it was football. They were, the numbers were going up. I hear you 100%. 
Hmm. But I agree with Zach 100% that that's really, I don't think our place is to get involved in that kind of advocating because we kind of stay in our lane and we kind of yeah, appreciate yeah. the lane we have. And, and they're, they're, because yeah, they're, you're going to have parents, hold up, you're going to have parents on both sides of that. Right. And so we would be involved in something that could be potentially very controversial. And yet it's really not our place. I mean, I love the way you tied it in. So from your personal perspective, that makes sense. Right. And uh, individually, I will write a letter to New Hope Silvery. I mean, I have but no we problem can't, with that. We can't have it from New Hope Cares. And that's that's fine. It's a very um, you have to walk the tightrope. And I understand I understand the politics. Right. Um, I, I just don't, I didn't know that. That's good. Good to know. Cause it, you're, you're walking the line. You, you don't want to, you can't, you cannot be on one side or the other because yeah. you have to remain neutral. Totally understood. So, but I think, yeah, definitely. If you want to drop your stuff in the, the chat and then if people want to reach out directly to you, they can, you know, if you want them to sign on to your letter or send the same, you know, send the same letter with their signature, however you want to organize that, I um, think that would be great. Okay, so I just I just chatted my email. Um, what I'll do is I will. I, I mean, I guess the simplest way is um, people can email me and ask for the letter. I don't want to, you know, copy people on it um, and out them, if you will. Right? That's not. I don't want to do that. But uh, I'll happily forward you the email. Um, whatever, whatever people are comfortable with. I just think and you're right, Dora, Dora, really, Dory, Dory that I know, sorry, um, <laughs> just keep, I'm just keep swimming must be in my head. Um, so I feel like it's just, it's, it's a tricky thing. And yes, the numbers went up, but I, I think in the sense of the numbers went up, but did anyone actually suffer? Probably. I don't, I'm going to remain silent on that because I'm, I'm probably not the best person to have this, you know. Um, I think we can also, and I have, I've had these conversations, I think where we can play a role too is in advising, you know, Dr. Lentz and, you know, some of the other administrators, which we have had these conversations, just reminding them the place for mental health and the place for right. substance abuse prevention and the role that those things play. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, I'm totally comfortable doing that. And, I, you know, we've been proponents for that the whole time. Right. Uh, we, we have a separate community coalition meeting that's all just school district partners that we help the school run. Mm -hmm. And that's basically been the venue for okay. our conversations with them on that. Um, so hear me in saying that I, I'm not against it. I just want to make sure that we do it in a way that you know, we don't lose ground in certain areas. I get it. I get yeah. it. It's all about now. It's it's all about navigating the the, uh, the landscape, right? Yeah. So, but okay. I can definitely I can definitely send a follow up too with Dr. Lentz and just remind him. You know, some of the the research that's come out lately, specifically yeah. with overdose. Uh, you know, yeah. the the national uh, overdose rates, both fatal and non fatal. Um, that's that research just came out, and it was it's pretty eye opening. So. Um, um, I also uh, recently um, came across a, a natural substance, not me, but I, I discovered this research. Um, it's a, actually a, a bark that lives in, that is indigenous to Costa Rica, that if people take it, uh, people who are addicted to opioids, they actually uh, become um, the propensity to want to pick up again. Um, it's kind of fascinating. I'll, I'll get some more information and I'll send it to you, Zach. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. That's actually, we have some interns that are working on newsletters for us right now and things. So, um, you know, if that's, you know, that we can have them, you know, fact check everything and yeah. do some research in it. And, yeah. you know, if it's a, if it's something that they want to pursue, then they can write some articles and include it in our newsletters. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it apparently it works for all things, not just opioids, like alcohol, all all kinds of um, uh, uh, addictions. Awesome, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Kate. Can I say something? Hi, um, my name's Terry Meehan. I'm the president of the New Hope Chamber of Commerce. Zachary, thank you for inviting me. 
Yeah, I thanks, also, Terry, for Just coming. to let you know, I've been in sobriety. Um, I've been in recovery for tw 32 years from alcohol and uh, drugs. So um, I have a little bit of knowledge about this kind of stuff. And I have been in rehab. And that bark you're talking about is really dangerous. Is I've it? Done extensive cert. Um, I, my niece brought it into my house. And she was like, you know, try this because it's <laughs> a place of opioids. It's not regulated. It's no, like, it's not, but guru guys that are like putting it out there. And so, you know, my friends were here doing it and it was like really insane putting this stuff in their system. And, you know, I'm not saying people shouldn't do it, but you know, it is another well, it, drug it, it, that it, gets you high. It, well, what it does, is it, it actually creates, you, you trip, right? You, yeah. You're basically doing acid. You um, can from it. It's like, it's another drug. It doesn't matter if it's natural or whatever, but I'm just saying my personal opinion on, on it is not that I'm an expert on sobriety, but I have been around for a while, is that it is dangerous because it's not regulated. It's kind of weird, but. Um, well, I, it, it sounds like it's in camp with like Kratom, which is, yeah, yeah which is out there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Terry, Terry, you, I don't know if you remember me. I used to work with I you. Lit. Yeah. How are you? Nice to see you. You too. Um, so I work, so I've worked in pharma for 22 years. I'm, I have a deep knowledge of, uh, of all kinds of drugs, um, good, bad, or indifferent opioids being one of them. I work actually currently for Purdue. And, um, you know, they're in the biggest lawsuit anyone's ever seen <laughs> to the tune of $15 billion. Um, and, you know, it's a slippery slope because it's not just the opioid that you get on, but it's the Suboxone that you have to, you know, go to in order to yep. survive and live and whatever. Um, it's just an interesting perspective. I'm not suggesting by any means that it's like, it's a cure-all. It's just, to me, it, it's interesting to... I mean, the, the ideal thing is never pick it up, right? But right. in the right. real world, we know. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. I'll share it. it I'll share, at, um, at the very least, it'd be good for us to, to, to you know, learn a little bit more about it. So, yeah, if you, if you want to send it over, Kate, yeah. that would be great. Um, not to uh, cut off good conversation, yeah. but... We I do will. want to try to get to the project um, that we um, that we want to talk through the business um, outreach project that we wanted to talk th through. Sarah, did we have other sector reps or um, board members that needed to give updates? Um, I know that Pam joined us a little after, so if Pam has any updates. Um, I think then we're we're good. Uh, no updates at this particular time. I mean, we're trying to get a board meeting. Hopefully we'll, uh, uh, you know, do one um, either virtually or uh, via a, a newsletter or some kind of updated newsletter. Okay, thanks, Pam. So if you, um, if you couldn't hear Pam, uh, she just said there's no updates at this time, but they're working on getting a, a virtual board meeting together. Um, and at that time, we'll be able to provide some more board updates. Um, Sarah, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, um, Catherine raised her hand. So if you have an update, and then we'll go to our uh, staff updates. Hi, it's Catherine Mitchell. I just um, I got on late tonight. I apologize. I'm here representing the Tuesday night parent group um, at uh, Trinity. Um, and I thank you for inviting us. I'm sorry I'm late. I wasn't going to be able to make it, but I was able to jump on. So I'm here. Um, if anyone wants to hear about our parent group on Tuesday night, we support parents who have children suffering from drugs and alcohol addiction. Thank you. Of all ages. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I will do some staff updates and then we'll get into our um, discussion for the evening. Um, I want to introduce... Um, as some of you know, we've had an administrative assistant for a little bit, Ingrid, who has left us, and we have hired Meredith, who's uh, hanging out in one of the boxes. It's about her maybe third or third or fourth week with us, and so she's getting into the swing of things. But Meredith, if you wanted to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Meredith Finnegan, and um, I just started, and I'm just getting to learn, you know, getting 
my feet wet with everything. So um, thank you for your patience <laughs> with, with everything that I'm doing right now. And um, thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks. Um, she'll be taking over a lot of um, the emailing and the reminders and our minutes and things like that. So she's going to be a great help. Um, so we're excited for that. Um, I think my only update is we are working on our Strengthening Families program again. We're hopefully going to offer a training in April and get some new facilitators. Um, so if you're interested in facilitating for us, it's pretty, pretty awesome. I can send you more information about that. Um, we're going to do two cohorts um, starting the end of April going almost into the summer. One is going to be a virtual cohort. And then the other one, we're going to use the Solid Rock Youth Center in Morrisville. So even if you know families in, in New Hope or the surrounding areas and it's a little bit of a drive, that's fine. Um, you'll see some more information about that coming up very soon. Uh, Zach, any other staff things? Um, I see Allison just hopped on. Um, I don't want to steal her thunder, but... Um... We, we do have two interns that are working with us this semester. They've been working with Allison because Allison uh, takes a lead role in some of our communications efforts. Um, so they have put together a newsletter, which you should see coming out shortly. Uh, they're also working uh, to bring to life a lot of the efforts that the vaping task force has been um, brainstorming, including some vaping prevention. Um, you know, social media posts and some marijuana prevention, social media posts and things. Um, so they, you know, you'll see a lot more lively posts coming out uh, shortly from our, our interns doing those things. So I think that's all I've got. All right. I'm out of things too. So we're going to move on into our new business and we're going to talk about um, kind of the start of what we're calling our partners in prevention plan. Um, for those of you that were here for our last meeting and we went over our entire action plan that we submit for, um, for the grant, uh, we looked at it a little more in depth this past couple weeks and we identified a couple areas that we would like to start work on, kind of hit the ground running. Um, and so this is all within our first goal. Um, and the goal here is to... Um, you know, increase awareness um, in our community about the use and misuse of substances. Um, the Partners in Prevention Plan that we're kind of calling it is going to look at two objectives that we have, Objective 1, and um, we're tying Objective 5 into it because Objective 5 is a little, little hard for us to do because of COVID. So, the objective we're looking at is strengthening current partnerships and increasing from two in 2020 to eight community partnerships um, by September as measured by MOU agreements. So we right now have, what are we counting as our two partnerships, Zach? Um, technically, it's Janie Montgomery Scott and Cornerstone. Okay. Um, that's where I was going with that. Um, we would love to kind of expand to as many businesses as possible. Um, we love the support that we get from our businesses already. And we know that these are very frequented places by the community. Um, so our original strategy was to collaborate with more local businesses through pre-existing venues. A little hard to kind of get into certain venues right now. Um, because of COVID. So we've sort of developed this plan that's, you know, us getting into those venues, but more in a, in a passive way where, you know, there's information in these partners, uh, businesses all the time. And so that's sort of where number um, objective five will come in. So we're trying to increase the, um, by 20%, the number of it pays to know one pagers that we distribute. Um, from 350 to 420. We've talked about this before in the sense that it's hard to give out paper right now. We're looking at having a digital copy of it, but also we're not going to as many events or festivals where we can give these items out. Um, so having these in the business is going to increase that as well. Yeah. 
So just to be clear, so the It Pays to Know One Pagers were designed, um, actually Dory was really instrumental um, in helping us design these. Um, it takes the most recent Pennsylvania Youth Survey data, which is specific to our school district, and it puts it on one side of a rack card. Uh, basically just the, the, the most important pieces for us. So um, alcohol use, marijuana use, prescription drug use in our community, um, uh, you know, some, some mental health facts. And then on the other side, it says it pays to partner and it lists how people can get involved with the coalition and continue to help uh, to prevent youth substance use. So that's the it pays to know piece. And, um, you know, really what, what happened here was we wrote these goals. The government requires us to write these goals almost a year in advance. So we wrote these goals a long time ago before COVID or right as COVID was starting with no, uh, you know, we had no plan for uh, COVID to last this long. And so now what we're looking at is how do we still achieve these goals, but we adapt them uh, to, you know, our current situation. Can I ask a question? I'm yeah. sorry, I'm so new to this. I just learned about this a couple hours ago, so um, I'm not really up on it, but um, can you tell me short what the purpose of this group is? Just so I have an understanding of it, because I know that it has to do with youth and prevention and all that sort of stuff Yeah. and, and reaching out to the businesses. I'd like to know that. And the second thing is, I'd like to know, what do you do exactly to deal with the youth one-on-one -on -one or in groups meeting with the youth, if there is a program that way? Yeah. Just so I have some knowledge with it because I'm really interested in getting involved in this kind of a thing. And um, anything that we can do and I can do personally, I'm very involved in, um, in recovery in lots of different ways. So if you could just give me a short one, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt the That's meeting. Okay. I just want to understand. Yeah, it's helpful for everyone. So um, New Hope Silvery Cares, basically our, our, our role in the community is uh, to prevent youth substance use. That's the primary role. Um, we have federal funding through a program called the Drug-Free Communities Grant Program. So there's a model for this. And the purpose of that grant is to uh, train local leaders to then gather the folks in the community from various sectors, which is, you know, tonight is a great opportunity for us to, to, to really see the sectors because so many of them are present, uh, you know, seeing like law enforcement, uh, business folks, healthcare folks, people from the school, all of these various sectors of the community coming together, learning about how to prevent youth substance use in their community. So, um, you know, we basically build these these goals, these strategies, using that knowledge and looking specifically at our community data um, to address the problem in, at a grassroots level. And then today, the Today program. Yeah, so, yeah, Dory, that's great. Yeah, so working with the youth. So just to be clear, we're talking macro level. So we don't do interventions once people are struggling with substance use. We're talking preventing substance use uh, holistically in the community. So looking at risk factors that exist in the community and trying to eliminate them and looking at things that we can develop in a community that are considered protective factors, which will lower the likelihood of youth use in the future in that community. And as far as working directly with youth, the biggest thing that we do is we have uh, two youth coalitions. One is in the middle school, well, it's really one, but it's a middle school group and a high school group uh, that work with us. And you see some of them here um, from the high school group. And some of the biggest successes that we have with that would be peer education, which is where the high school students have developed curriculum. And then we've fostered this kind of relationship with the middle school where they can go in and teach middle school students their curriculum. Um, we also have them, they, you know, they, they work on alternative events and activities. They do volunteering activities together. Um, they do, um, some awareness campaigns. And that's what we were kind of talking about with the social media campaigns um, to talk about, you know, specifically about so, uh, substance use trends. Um, so that's a lot of what they're, they've been kind of working on. Does that answer your question, Terry? It does. Um, I, I'm curious to know, uh, I'm curious to know about, it sounds, lack of better word, corporate, corporate. 
Um, I'd like to understand, does it work from this whole outside part of it? Because just because being an addict from a very young age with all this kind of stuff, how does it, does it work? Does it really work? And yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to insult any of you. I, no. I just want to understand because when I was, you know, 13 years old, sitting there drinking and doing drugs, you know, all, we didn't have social media like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was younger. But would that really have made a difference for me? So I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. And, um, I'm very about, you know, getting in and, and chatting with the kids and talking with the youth because, you know, we can do all the social media and all that stuff on the outside that we want to do or, you know, what you're doing. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just, does it really work? Do the kids really pay attention to it? That's what yeah. I'd like to know. Yeah. And just to speak to that a little bit, um, things have changed a lot since, um, you know, this is your brain on drugs or some of the campaigns that you might remember. Yeah. Um, and, and prevention science, and it is at this, at this point, they consider it a science. Um, prevention science has come a long way. Um, so I, they, they, call, they call it evidence-based. So um, basically what that means is that they research and they follow the trends of these types of interventions, community level interventions. And uh, they're able to say that if you do these certain things, you will have these certain outcomes, right? Um, so that's exactly the type of work that we look at doing. And that's the, the type of interventions that we try to do in our community. Um, also, I just, I need to say this because Talia has her hand raised um, and she just direct messaged me that she says that she would like to uh, meet you and have you come to their peer education <laughs> club at some point. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm 100% on board. This is you know, you know, one of the things about recovery is service and, yep. you know, I am available to do whatever it, it's, it, it actually gets me very excited to work with youth. It's not been something I work with, um, in the, you know, the Karen foundation, which yep. is actually a rehab where I went to, um, for drug abuse, not alcohol. And, uh, I, I, I meet with those people and I do a lot of meetings there. So whatever I can do, feel free to, to reach out to me. I'm, I'm more than happy to do anything. I really am. It, it's really exciting what you're doing. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Yeah, um, thanks, Terry. So I just wanted to add something, Terry. Um, I'm uh, knowing your partner, Lynn, um, and knowing, you know, we've had an opportunity to talk a little bit. And I think, you know, a lot of this stuff, I, I believe in my heart um, that it's leading by example. So, you know, uh, incidentally, last February, I decided to cut alcohol out of my life for a multitude of reasons, all positive, right? There's nothing but upside. Sobriety is nothing but upside. And people sort of look at you like, why'd you do that? And you're like, I don't know, because it felt like a good decision. And as a result, my relationship with my children has completely changed and all for the better. And I think that to, you know, your question is super valid. Does it work, right? I think what we have to do as parents, as people in the community, whatever that it is, if you lead by example, that's all you can do. Because if I can't sit there and tell my kids not to, you know, smoke cigarettes and drink when, if I'm doing it, right? So right. Um, I, I chose a different path and it's, it's, the un, it's the unpopular one, but I don't care. And it's that unpopular, pardon me, it's not that unpopular. I know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> isn't it funny, right? But it's it's fascinating to see how many people struggle with this, whether it's a, a full addiction or it's just something that they're managing all the time. And I think that these habits get developed over time, and we just acquiesce to them, like, oh, um, I have some great literature that I'm happy to share with the group as well that helped me and really crystallize like, oh my God, this has been going on for so long. Um, simple reads um, that can help and they're, they're designed uh, just to kind of get your head around not only the social pressure, but also the science behind it. Um, these two books in particular, one is called, um, uh, oh my God, it's escaping me. Um, 
uh, I now it's literally gone out of my head. It's and just like that, my memory's gone. But the point is, like, uh, you know, I have to teach my kids what good looks like. I think we all have to do that, and it's critically important to um, have that conversation. My my son is fourteen, and he is at a critical age. And Zach and I have had this conversation for a couple of years, and um, it terrifies me to think that you know I say to him all the time, like. If you go to a party, this is what I expect from you. And it's coming, right? It's all coming. Um, but how do you prevent it and and not feel the pressure and not want to, you know, go along with the flow or whatever it is? So I do think it's working, but it really comes from a grassroots perspective. But to Zach's point about the evidence-based science, I mean, you can't fight data, right? Oh, you can't. And that's great to know that that's there. I had no idea. It's great. Yeah. I know that the, the science part of it, I understand from the, from the addiction part of it, it's this part of it that's different. You know, it's like, I understand what's going on in the brain and all that, but you know, something like this is, is just very different. And um, it's, it's kind of sad that more people don't know about it. Even in my recovery, I, mean, I, I texted some people, including my sponsor and said, I'm going to this. And they're like, well, what is it? What do they do? And she yeah. has children and, and she has two 13 year olds, you know? So it's very cool. And I think there needs to be more awareness of it. So what, what I, what I could suggest maybe is um, we have a pre-built kind of presentation to explain, um, you know, more of, of this work. And maybe what we can do is uh, at our next coalition meeting, we'll, we'll give a summa summation of it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll dwindle it down a little bit, but we'll, we'll walk through all of it. Uh, at our next coalition meeting. So for those of you who are really interested in this, definitely what I would say is come to our next coalition meeting and I guarantee you I'll walk through it. Um, and also Talia had her hand raised. So I'm going to turn it over to her really briefly and let her talk. Thank you, Zach. Okay. So there are three of us from the Today Club here and um, we have an awesome, I don't even know what we would call Lindsay, but she's awesome. And she is a really good role model. And it's been awesome, like getting to know her. And, um, but we do like, actually a lot with the club. And we've actually gotten to have like a ton of kids, even like teenage boys, which I feel like are the most unreachable group. We've um, gotten them to join our club. And like, we have boys doing peer education in the middle school. Um, and we also, Lindsay holds meetings and we usually do like little cahoots or something like that where we learn about like a lot of time it's like data from the pay survey and kids are always like texting us after like, what the heck? I had no idea that all, like this was a problem or like I actually learned so much in this meeting. So I, I feel like we do a lot and it's actually really cool. Thanks. Uh, I was just going to say, um, as far as evidence-based programs, there's, a really good one out there that I probably Zach has heard of or Sarah's probably heard of, but it's called the Catch My Breath program. It's the first evidence e-cigarette prevention program that was made. Um, it's been, I think, two years, and they do a great job updating it. So each year they basically update the material. I know this year with COVID going on, they changed their whole layout. Um, and all their videos, speaking of the videos, are all videos that are, like, up to date. So they use a lot of real costs. Um, so it speaks more to the kids and the population that is being that is being used for. There's all different grade levels, whether it's seventh, eighth, uh, fifth, sixth. So it's a great resource. Um, so Tara, if you're interested, I can send that over to Zach because it is free. Anybody can use it as well. Um, so it's a great program. Thanks, Lee. Mm -hmm. So um, just for the sake of time, because we we did actually at, at one point we had two hour meetings and um, you know. We, we, people wanted us to cut them back. So now we have one hour meetings. So for the sake of time, uh, I promise I will go through, um, you know, all of what the DFC program is uh, next time. But I just want to take the last little bit and let Sarah um, kind of engage you all in conversation about this partner and prevention program and see if you have some feedback for us, um, as well as if we can uh, maybe brainstorm some of the, the businesses or what might be easier because of timing, if you can think about businesses and connections that you might have in the community that, that you think would want to do this with us and then let us know, um, you know either via email or, or after the fact, um, and then we can, we can contact them. So Sarah, if you wanna take it from here. 
Awesome. Um, yeah, so as Zach said, we're going to try and roll out this partner in prevention program. We have lots of informal partnerships in the community and we, we love that and we want to take it one step further. And I think about it in the sense of, um, you know, the, the pizza shop has the t-ball the team, their picture up on the wall and, you know, they kind of partner with t-ball. Well, we're looking for businesses that would be interested in partnering with us and we would speak with them, meet with, you know, managers and owners and kind of do exactly what Zach said he's going to do in the next meeting. Explain what we're, we're all about um, more than they might already know. Um, explain how their role in the community is actually, um, you know, a protective factor for for the youth that we have seeing you know our branding and our partnership and our information um, wherever the the youth go so our goal is to um, get in touch with a lot of these businesses have these conversations and then leave them with um, this toolkit that we've sort of brainstormed um, about assembling and so what would be in there would be um, an official letter from all of us and from the board, thanking them for their partnership, um, a, an official certificate that says that they are a partner in prevention that they could hang up right next to the uh, the t-ball team on the wall, um, stickers that they could put around their business um, with some messaging on them that's important. We do uh, a campaign every year, sometimes twice a year, um, called Sticker Shock that the the pizza shop puts on their on their boxes that says about um, buying alcohol for underage um, students, underage people in general. And so it would be kind of in that sense of they could put them around their businesses, they could put them on the, the windows or the doors of, if it's the, the liquor store, maybe on the doors of the freezers and things. So just people see them, people get the information as they're going about town. Um, we would also provide them with two flyers that we are going to use the pays data that is on our um, it pays to know one pager. We're looking at maybe two flyers, one about alcohol, one about marijuana, because we know that those are really the substances in our community that, you know, affect our youth. Um, we would be giving them the, the rack cards so that they can see the facts and see that they can also join us in partnership if they're interested. So really what we want to do with the, the rest of this meeting is listen to your voices and think about what businesses in town would be good partners for us. Um, if you have any thoughts on our, our plan and have ideas that maybe would go in the toolkit or would go in our letter or things like that and any contacts that you have. So I'll let Zach go and then we can just start a dialogue. The other piece to it that, um, you know, wasn't reflected there is that we, we want to give them some advertisement space as well. Um, because whenever we try to build partnerships, we know, we know that we want to know what's in it for them. Right. So, um, you know, we want to give them some advertisement space probably on our website as well as, um, some of our, you know, some of our, uh, it pays to partner materials, uh, as well. So that, you know, when people look and say, oh, well, maybe I want to partner, they'll see that we also have all these partners. Um, and really the, the goal is just to get this information out there, um, so that we can kind of fill the community with the information, the facts about our community, because a lot of people, they look at our community and they say, oh, that doesn't really happen here. Um, so the goal would be for them to, to see, oh, well, it really does happen here. You know, one of the things that we can do with the chamber is if you want, we can set up a page, you can do a whole tab and put your information up there. I'm one happy to help do that. I'm one happy to reach out to the businesses, whatever we can do, just let us know. But it would be kind of cool, I think, on our website to have a whole tab just, just, just for this because I don't know of anything like that anywhere. And I think it'd be really important. And I think that the community would really embrace it. We have a lot of um, people that aren't on our board, but who are like liaisons to the community. So um, whoever it is that I should get in contact with, have them contact me and we'll put you on our website for sure. We'll give you your whole page, we'll make it happen. And whatever we can do, reach out to us. We're happy to meet with you or do whatever we can. Thanks, Terry, that's awesome. Sure. 
Terry, I am so happy to see you tonight. You have made my entire week. I've been doing this, Zach knows this, I've been involved with this. Uh, I was actually in the, in this, on the staff uh, way back, maybe five, six years, maybe. And I mean, to hear you ask the questions you're asking, they're so appropriate. And it's exactly what we need is to educate you as much as we can and get your help. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just gonna say one real quick thing. And I did talk to Zach about this. Wendy Thomas is our local state rep. She's the local state rep for New Hope Solbury. Awesome. And I, I know Wendy, and um, I, I should have just said this to Zach. I'm more than happy to go walk into Wendy's office and ask her staff if they might know some business. Oh my goodness, these reps know every business. If she might know a couple of gems that I could get in front of. So I'm more than happy to do that. The only thing I would need is whatever handout you're talking about, whatever leave behind you have, I can get that from you, right, Zach? Yep. Okay. Perfect. So can I just ask, um, of the toolkit materials, Sarah, can you go back to that slide? Maybe. And is, is this only limited, this is only limited to New Hope Solbury businesses? We, we're not expanding beyond that, correct? I mean, I'm not opposed to them having it, but the problem is that the data is only New Hope Solbury data, right? It, so it, it's, it makes perfect sense for all the reasons I know. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. So, so Zach, if I could just add, um, I would focus on like businesses that probably have marketing budgets. So things yeah. like the small regional banks, um, they all have probably some degree of marketing budgets. Um, <clears throat> things like that new, that new sandwich place that pulled in, that major uh, franchise place there. Uh, Jersey Mike's. Yep, Jersey Mike's. I'm, I'm sure they have a budget. So yeah, I'm thinking like McCaffrey, McCaffrey's, um, McCaffrey's is a great one. Uh, um, you know, any wealth management McCaffrey. companies in you know, uh, and there are several in uh, New Hope. I know. Yeah, I'm. Th I'm just thinking in my head like who my financial planner is, who I know at the bank, all that stuff. So maybe there's a opportunity to put lists together. It, everyone sort of provide a list of who they know, um, and then coupling that with Terry's connections and see how we can get our arms around this. Yeah. Can I also ask, I um, it, so helpful to have uh, the businesses where uh, the youth frequent? Mm -hmm. That's a great point. You know, so I'm thinking Wawa, Starbucks. Wawa, I don't sure. even know if folks go to HG anymore since Jersey Mike's moved in, um, you know, but Mc McDonald's. Those, it, it, and again, may not have the budgets, but uh, you're seeing the NHS cares and you're seeing the pays data. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think if it's walkable, they're in they're inside, right? Wawa definitely, McDonald's, at, not as much, but certainly, um, I know f just knowing where my kids m frequent, and if it's walkable. Um, place they're they're in there so it would be all it's also adults because we want parents to be ha to have the information they need to communicate to their children the absolutely. reasons why they shouldn't use under age so absolutely wherever kids go is great but I'm thinking about the library too that's both kids and adults like not that they have the money but they could be a partner in some in some way I mean it just opens up so many different ideas. But Pam, your suggestion or idea about a marketing budget is huge because we need to become sustainable at some point. So we need to start getting that money. Penn Community is really good. They Most of the banks in New Hope, because we get money from the banks for our events and stuff, are more than willing. I know Wawa has a budget of like $1,000 they'll give to, um, to events and things in the community. But uh, the banks are great. You know, we get a lot of money from them. And there's actually some business in New Hope that would probably jump right on board. I think it'd be great. Yeah, I'm thinking there are two, um, there's a couple of families that own businesses in the area that I have um, I have a relationship with. And I'm ha one, one works for a local bank and one has their own business. Um, so I'm going to reach out to some of these people too and see what they're their threshold is for support. Thanks so much, Kate. Um, One other thing I think we can go after is um, we have a lot of um, employees from the drug industry that live in this area and commute over. And um, 
they have typically a matching program so that they can, if they contribute or if they participate in an organization, the company has a matching um, uh, donation. And also we have some pretty pe some people here that are pretty high up that I think they could probably, um, again, tap into those marketing dollars from these big pharmas. Um, so I, yeah, I work in big pharma um, and I can attest to that. I mean, I manage about $10 million in marketing dollars and that's only increasing. Um, the, there are no pharma companies in New Hope, obviously, but there's certainly, you know, the, the pharma belt, majority of it is in New Jersey. Um, Purdue not being in New Jersey, but certainly maybe Purdue wants to be involved in this, right? Um, I have a direct line to people who make a lot of decisions and a couple thousand dollars isn't much to them. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny, but it's true, right? Yeah, right. No, but I, I also think it's a, it's good publicity. For oh them. my, it's well, really this exact thing, Purdue, pay out, hey, let's prevent some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm hearing almost there, that there's kind of two levels to this, because initially what we were looking at was really getting, just tr trying to get information out there, but um, some of you are saying, you know, maybe there's a second level, which is an ask of a financial ask as well, uh, which I think is great. And if, if we want to pursue that, that's, uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, I did want to, I, I pulled Chief Cummings in. I wanted to ask him just because I think, you know, he walks the beat, um, Main Street there. Uh, Chief Cummings, how do you feel the, the local businesses would feel about um, this toolkit? Well, like I said, uh I just heard about this uh, the, the other day. I actually called Zach about something else. And uh, he was telling me about this. And that's why I asked Terry to get involved. Uh, she has more of a pulse uh, of what the merchants uh, would do. And it sounds like she's very positive about it. I think anybody, you know, it, your, your partner in prevention toolkit, I think, is something that doesn't cost anything. And it's certainly uh, uh, people are not, you're giving them everything they need, uh, a rack to put the cards in and, it's, it's a matter of just finding a little space on their counter to put it. So I, th I don't think that's a hard sell. Okay. Except okay. maybe in the bars in town. <laughs> well, and you know, it's interesting you, sh you should say that. At one point, we did talk about specifically um, trying to find ways to put information in the bars. Um, and, and we brainstormed around coasters. Mm. Um, because, you know, like if we had our, our stuff on coasters, then, they, you know, they... they that's free money for them because they have to buy them usually if we're giving them coasters. Um, so I don't know if that's something that they'd be interested in or not. But well, if you look at <laughs> if you look at a place like if you look at a place like France, France has been here forever, right? And they're um, super supportive, and they they're they're the owner. I know she's she's awesome. Um, I don't frequent there. I don't you know bars are certain. Well, no one goes to bars anymore because they're not allowed. But. Um, I think that's sort of a cool uh, approach. And as far as marketing is concerned, Zach, um, I'm happy to talk to you offline about how to maximize the dollars and um, maybe even get some free help uh, for design, whatever it is. There's lots of ways to kind of skin the cat, if you will. Um, no offense to the cats, but uh, we, I'm happy to help facilitate some of that. I have a lot of designers, a lot of I have a dev group. There are a lot of um, people who could help. So we could talk offline about that too. Awesome. And Zach, maybe one additional thought is I'm, I'm trying to think about, well, where do, pa where do families and where uh, do um, the youth go in New Hope Sobury? Another option may be medical practices. So at the dentist, you know, I'm at, I'm thinking of design for vision, the ophthalmologist, et cetera. Um, so that, that could be a subset. Yeah, that's great. So uh, places, what about places where families go, you know, where conversations like that can happen at the table, you know, where, where do families go for dinner? You know, Sesame <laughs> place, places where, where it can get a start. G you know? Yeah. Giuseppe's is definitely Giuseppe's is the one. Um, and also, you know, um, churches 
you know, uh, like Covenant, which is where I go, um, it has an incredible, incredible groundswell. It's not in New Hope, but a lot of New Hopians go there. Um, or, you know, uh, Trinity. There are a bunch of churches, obviously, that we could we could identify, because I know that there's a lot of, uh, the, the lady who was speaking earlier about um, being from Trinity. So maybe there's a way we can streamline that too. How about, what about doing like a fair or an event? You know, why don't, why don't we do an event? That would be like really cool to do. Are we allowed to do an event? Terry? It's hard with COVID. Well, you know, funny you say that because we're planning the New Hope Arts and Crafts Festival. And I just found out that we're allowed to have 1600 people. That's and amazing. That's at the, that's at the school. So, I mean, there's lots of different spaces that we know of, but it's like maybe having an event would be really cool to do down the line, you know, yep. throwing yep. that out there. Yeah. And, a, and, awesome. a, and a fundraiser. Yeah, that would definitely be good. Yeah, let's raise some dollars. Sponsored by Purdue. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I, I really appreciate the conversation tonight. I really appreciate everyone that came out. Um, and for the sake of time, because like I said, I promised that we'd keep these meetings to an hour. Um, I will say that we can we can close this out. Um, Sarah has the the next meeting up. Uh, well, she had it up real quickly there. It's March twenty fourth. Um, what was that, Sarah? I said whoops. Sorry. Oh. I it down. <laughs> um, so March twenty fourth, and um, I do want to since we have so many folks here on the call, I do want to take kind of a a quick kind of uh, poll, an informal poll here. Um, we have always struggled with, do we meet during the day or do we meet in the evenings? And, um, you know, historically we've actually done better at 10 o'clock in the morning, but, uh, this, you know, this evening meeting has been really great. So of all the folks on here, um, can I say maybe show of hands for 10 o'clock in the morning works? Okay. A couple. And show of hands for 6.30, it works, 6.30 p.m. Okay. So uh, that is helpful for us. That's our informal um, little little poll here. Um, so I would say tentatively 10 o'clock in the morning because that's what we plan for, but with the possibility of changing because uh, so many of you have indicated that 6.30 works for you. Um, I think as well, there was a lot of, there's a lot of follow-up that we talked about. Um, so if you all can, can just reach out to us with that follow-up that you've, you've indicated that you're going to do. Some of you asked for things from us. I promise that I get that to you. Uh, Dory, I know you, you need a sample of the toolkit. And, and um, so we'll, we'll make sure that we get those follow-up items to you as well. Next meeting, we'll give just a, a quick overview of exactly what the DFC program is. Um, and then we'll continue to try to break out some of these action items that are on our agenda and try to adapt them to COVID. So thanks everyone. If you wanna hang out and, and chat, feel free to, to do that. But the, the, the meeting I think is officially closed. Oh, and please take our evaluation survey. Um, so that way we can report back to the DFC.